All right, today we are going to be tying the po' boy, and I, oh, for the hook I've chosen, uh, we're going to be using the 506H. I love new hooks, and this is a new X-Series hook that we've come out with, uh, the big saltwater uh, jig hook, essentially. So what I like about it is it's really going to have that nice wide gap. It's got a forged bend, and it's going to allow my fly to ride hook, ride, uh, hook point up without having to add, add a weed guard or anything like that. So I'm going to start tying. Start my thread just behind the bend. Nice little thread base. I'm using the size 2.0 for my big one. Uh, so I am going to tie in a size large lead eye. Smaller version I do in a size 2. Quick little thread base on the shank. Back to the bend. Then I'm going to come back up. Okay. First, going to use uh, chartreuse puller fiber. One trick I like to use is cutting with the hide on the fire, the hair still. So I've got a nice piece on the hide. Clean it up a little bit. Tie it in reverse, so you can see its natural flow is this way. I'm going to reverse all that hair. I'm going to tie it with the hide up. So come in, trap that high, and then just keep it centered on the hook. Okay. Next, I'm going to use Chicone's Crusher Legs and Fluorescent Chartreuse and Clear, size wide. I'm going to tie these legs in so they come out off either side. So I'm just going to give a couple wraps on one side. Fold these over and catch it with a couple thread turns on the other. Just let those dangle for now. I'm going to create a dubbing loop. Essentially created this fly to be a really quick tie with not many materials. About halfway done with the fly. So I created a dubbing loop. I'm going to keep that out of the way for now. And I'm going to make a little material pinch here that I'm going to combine some craft fur and flash. So I'm going to take some white craft fur and cutting the hide. So I got a little piece like this. I'm going to make it go 90. I'm just spreading it out in this little material pinch here so I can cover quite a bit of ground in that dubbing loop. You use ripple ice wing fiber for the flash. I just pull out a small pinch. I'm going to clean it up a little bit and cut it in half. Now I'm just going to spread it out amongst that craft fur that I've laid in this material clip. Okay, so I'm ready to spin now. I'm going to bring off my dubbing loop, split with my fingers. Now I've got my craft fur and flash in there. Go ahead and pinch it. 
this point I'm going to spread out this, this craft fur just so I can cover a little bit more ground. Maybe shorten up one side a bit. Now if I were to make this side, the natural side, really long, I'd have really long fibers, but it wouldn't create much body in the dubbing loop. So I actually have to keep quite a bit of dead end on one side or cut ends. So once it spins, it just is a little bit more full. So go ahead and spin that up. Come through with a bodkin, pick out all those trap materials. So now I got myself a nice quick brush, craft fur and ripple ice wing. Now when I wrap forward, I'm just going to kind of keep everything out of the way at first. But yeah, each wrap is not going to be super tight. I'm going to, my angle instead of being like this as I wrap forward is going to be more like this. Just so my body's not too full. You're going to get that contrast of colors, but I don't want a big fat body underneath uh, that chartreuse wing. Not too concerned at this point of trapping any of this craft fur. It's pretty fragile material I can pick out and uh, break as I see fit. Yeah, just working my way forward until I'm just behind the eyes. Okay. And now I'm going to wrap underneath the eyes and get one or two wraps in. Okay, I'm going to tie that off. Push this stuff back, give it a couple more securing turns. Come back through with my bodkin again and pick out any of those trap materials. The idea is for this fly to sink quick. If I did a really full fat body, it wouldn't sink as quickly. Okay, now that I'm here, I'm just going to part ways on the top here so I can bring that chartreuse back over. That's pretty good. So we got it in place. I can kind of switch fingers, get a couple wraps in, recenter if you need to, a couple more wraps. We'll worry about that chartreuse here in a little bit. Now to clean up the head, since I have this hide in here, I'm going to first make a flat cut and then I'm going to cut the hide into a point just so I get a more tapered, nice uh, head. Give it a couple more wraps. Now I've got all this stuff in the way. A really nice tip here is just to take lighter singe some of those hairs back. Keep your fingers in place that's holding all that material back and now just clean up that head nicely. Pretty much done. And a whip finish. And now my final step before I glue is I'm going to just come back through with my bodkin and part that chartreuse puller fiber on the top just so it splits the bend of the hook nice and even. Come back here, trim my legs even. Just hit it with a little crazy glue and voila. Fairly quick. Nice profile, has all the wiggles, sinks quick. And that nice new 506H up.